Hi there, Andre here, your local expert in all things real estate. Hi, and I'm Andre as well, uh, your local mortgage expert. Whoa, wait, so we have Andre. And Andre. And Andre. Yeah. It's like a little one, two, duo, punch, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so today we're here to talk about what it takes to be ready to buy a home. I've had people tell me, hey, I'm not ready to buy yet, or uh, we'll let you know when we're ready. Um, and I want to bring in my friend Andre to kind of uh, to help us guide through the process of what is actually required to buy a house and what can we do to be ready. So Andre, can you just kind of give me an idea what, what are like the basics of what we need or what I need to have to be ready to buy a house? Yeah, sure. Basically, when we qualify someone for a loan, we look at the three main components, income, income. assets, and credit. And when we look at income, we mainly uh, want to see two years of employment history, right? It doesn't have to be with the same employer, but as long as you have two years of employment history and you're currently employed, then we can consider your income. When it comes to assets, we're mainly concerned about down payment and closing costs. Um, you know, sometimes people think that we, they need 20% for down payment. And that's great, but that doesn't have to be 20%. There's um, a lot of different loan options that require less than 20%. For example, FHA loan requires only 3.5% down payment. Now, I heard that uh, FHA is maybe a loan that's not as good or I, sh I shouldn't have it or people won't take it, that conventional is better. Is that true? No, that, that's not true. Actually, FHA in a lot of um, aspects is a better loan than a conventional. The only difference is that FHA requires additional um, items when it comes to an appraisal. Um, they want uh, the house to be uh, without health and safety hazards. So oh, okay. if the appraiser goes out to inspect the property and finds chipping paint, dry rot and things like that, it will be a, an additional uh, condition for the seller to take care of but in any other aspects, it's, it's a very good loan. Okay, so so far we have uh, income history, you said yes. two years two of employment. Years. It doesn't have to be the same employer, but as long as you have two years of employment. Yes. And the second one was down payment. Down payment and, and closing costs. And closing costs, that's right. together. Yeah. Uh, about how much do, do I need for closing costs? I mean, what's that? Closing costs are all the costs associated with getting a loan. Okay, so escrow fees, title fees, some recording government fees, underwriting fees, all of that is considered closing costs. Okay. And normally we would like to say that it's about 3% from the purchase price, but it could be less, could be more depending on the uh, loan. Okay, okay, so roughly 3% of the purchase price. So if I'm buying a house for about 300,000, to make it easy, it's about nine grand yeah. for closing costs. And Maybe then, a little bit less than nine. Okay, yeah. eight or nine grand, mm -hmm. and then down payment. Again, you're saying it doesn't have to be 20, it doesn't have to be right. 10. Yeah, three and a half percent. Three and a half percent, so that's another eight or nine grand. So really looking for maybe 20 grand, yeah. kind of upfront mm -hmm. uh, for, for down payment, closing costs. Yeah, and it's on the 300,000. Yeah, 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 on a $300,000 house, that's kind of what we're looking. Right. And then what, what, what's the last thing? Is there something else that I need the to? credit. The credit. Yeah. Okay. So credit score is important. Every loan looks at the credit score, but it doesn't have to be 700, 740, or 800. You know, the conventional loan requires a 620 minimum credit score. FHA actually requires a 580, or we can go as low as 500, but then we the lender would require 10% down payment. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So there's a lot of options. There's, there's a lot of options. And, yeah. the, and, the, and there's a lot of ways to kind of get the loan. Exactly. It's not really a straightforward 20%, right. 740 credit score. Mm -hmm. uh, so really at the end of the day, I mean, what I'm hearing from you is it's really important to have a lender yes. that you're talking to yeah. like early on. Exactly. Uh, that it doesn't really make sense to wait until you found the house to start like to no no as a matter of fact you know a lot of people go to the real estate agent first but they don't know how much they qualify for so i believe that the first step should be 
for uh, for them to sit down with a loan officer. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Andre, sorry. Andre, sorry. But you they gotta to come to me first. <laughs> but you need to know how much they qualified for, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So, so it's a bit of a partnership is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I think that's really what we're saying here, that it is a partnership between yes. the realtor and the lender to help you find the best option. And so you really need to have both people in your corner uh, to help you, you know, understand your options, to help you understand kind of the different ways that, that you can approach it, uh, so that you feel confident, so that when you're out looking at houses, you you uh, yeah, you know what you can afford, you know what you can actually do. Yep. Uh, so really, I think that's that's the point. Talk to a realtor, look at houses, talk to a loan officer, so they can tell you exactly how much you qualify, or if you don't qualify right now, they will put you on a path. Uh, to get you to a point that you qualify. Oh, that's great. All right, have a great day. Yep, thank you.